the water in here turns black and within hours it turns clear again and the fish don't seem to mind the extra iron at all occasional scratch from the <laughs> residents so. what is the number one food source for a dragonfly mosquitoes people say what about a pond doesn't it attract mosquitoes and it attracts wildlife that eat the mosquitoes you will actually hurt the local community instead of helping it when you put in a pond <laughs> So Barbie Holdeman, where are we? We are at Westminster Retirement Village. Aw, and a long time ago, Paul put a pond in here and then he they loved it so much, he put another one and another one and another one. There's four water features here, huh? Four plus, there's a secret tortoise habitat. Oh, cool. I don't know that we'll get to visit today because we there is, are still some COVID restrictions. I'll get in there. So I'm Greg Whitstock, the pond guy. This is my channel, Greg Whitstock, the pond guy. And I'm out here, are we in Scottsdale? Where are we at? Yeah, Scottsdale. Scottsdale, Arizona, checking out a retirement home where Paul Holdeman of the Pond Gnome put in the first water feature how long ago? 16 years ago. Okay, hey, look at that. So we're, that's one of the ones we want to replace eventually. They just had it redone because it was leaking really bad. Things Shocking, that, right? You'll notice <laughs> one of the things they did when they redid it was they coated all the concrete in oh, some kind of a red right. sealer. Oh yeah, so, so all natural. all of the mortar joints are now red, except for the water line. This is a chemically treated pond. And so here's the thing about this. There's no fish, there's no aquatic plants, it's chemicals, it's not good for the environment, it's not good for the animals. Right. And this is 95 out of 100 features that you'll see in Arizona, or something similar to this. Especially in commercial settings. Nobody's sitting out here, it's just there. I'm not even sure what we're gonna see, but something tells me that people interacted a lot more than they interact see with this that, one. See that jungle on the other side over there? Yes. That would be our pond. All right, let's go check it out. And then you tell me, is this what you like? With pool technology, with chemicals, or what we build with ecosystem Ponds. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I love that contrast. Of course, the bench right here yeah. for people to sit and look at that. Life, nature, plants, bees, birds, fish, yeah. irises, blooming, arrowhead, clear water because it's an ecosystem, bacteria, rock and gravel, water lilies, waterfalls, wetland plants, nature, and then people that come and hang out and love this stuff. So that's a wetland filter up there, little fish in there swimming, and I guarantee you those fish got in there by the eggs. The eggs came up here and the fish got in here. And now of course, inside, people drive by <laughs> in their little carts and they look out at that. And it's something to see from inside the building. There's a nice koi, Shamu, big white koi in there. Oh, there's a yellow koi coming out of a fish cave that he put in there for comfort. Intake bay, so this is where the water flows down. Purple Louisiana iris, I mean, how beautiful is that? This or that? No comparison. Hello. Hey. I'm the Pond Guy, Greg. Hey, I'm Bob Miller. Nice to meet you, Bob. Bob Miller was uh -huh. instrumental in getting us our first invitation to this property. I told Bud we need some kind of a water feature. Yeah. He told me, well, write me a proposal. And so I wrote a proposal, picked out about three sites around the property, not this one. And Bud says, okay, we're going to get one. Thank you did good work. <laughs> Hello. Hi. I'm Bree, Director of Activities. Fun! And Hi, Bree. Lou Cornell, a resident here at Westminster. Hey, Lou, how you doing? The Pond Guy, nice to meet you. Director of Activities, why did you bring these guys out here? Like, Mr. Miller, of course, is vital for the start of he was the beginning here, of this. Yes, and knows the background stories of many of these ponds and the areas around campus. And Mr. Cornell is our resident, I'm going to say, plant guy. Well, it's you're doing a good grow. job. The yeah. plants look spectacular. <laughs> Blooming Louisiana iris in there. I was just 
contrasting life with biology and then concrete with chlorine, the difference. And we have one more resident who will be joining us, Miss Sarah Hammond. She is our butterfly lady. I love it. Yes. Plant guy, butterfly lady, we got it all here. So this was a very interesting proposal. 16 years ago when I showed up, the problems they were having, this was a retention basin. There was just rock down through the bottom and it wasn't draining. And it takes all of the condensate and you can see over right, that's taking runoff from the rooftops and the chillers condensate comes out there. And this area wasn't drying out at all. So it was a big mosquito and vector problem and they wanted a cure for that. And they asked me if one of my ponds would solve the problem. Well, we still had to take the condensate water and when they drain the fire sprinklers out of all these buildings, all those fire sprinklers get drained right into here. So hard to believe, but this crystal clear water is actually filtered water from the fire sprinklers. And every time Time they drain the fire sprinklers the water in here turns black and within hours it turns clear again and the fish don't seem to mind the extra iron at all and by the way they allow me to keep one of our beautiful stones right here on the side of it so anybody that visits this pond and i'm allowed to send people that don't live here to come and take a look at this because of course right on the other side of those windows are the sales offices and they love to see visitors come in all of the ponds here this pond was the first pond that we built here since then we have built four more. One of the challenges for this pond was that we built it in the summertime and there is no air circulation here because it is surrounded by three-story buildings. So there's no breeze and there is no air movement anywhere around this pond. So the guys, it was like a sweat factory while we were building it. But of course now it is a nice riparian area. That's a wetland filter there. There are frogs living in here. So sometimes during some times of the year, the tadpoles are just thick in this area where the frogs lay all their eggs. This bench seat is almost always full with people that are hanging out. Sarah. Hello. Sarah's Hello. in charge of butterfly plants oh, in the, the butterfly, butterfly gardens. Guy. She is the local butterfly I'm expert. Fine guy, Greg. Okay, Greg. So what kind of Great. butterflies do you come in here? Oh, all kinds. We made Monarch History last year. Okay. We're very, very affiliated with uh, Butterfly Wonderland and we're like an adjunct to them. The monarchs are the only butterflies that really migrate. Yes. And if they're east of the Rockies, they go down to Mexico. West of the Rockies, they go to California. So check out this nice place right here. And the first thing I see when I'm walking over here is the whole collection of Clive Cussler. How funny is that? We come from his house and then we walk into a retirement center and they're filled with a library with Clive Cussler. Nice it's a beautiful place. I love the reef tank over here. And they've even got frags in there too. Wow. Just all of them at live coral. See, they start with frags. You are now entering the secret garden and tortoise habitat. Big Salcata? Yeah. Um... Bruno. Bruno's. <laughs> Bruno's Bordeaux. <laughs> oh, I see. There's his home right there. He's not in his home right now. So now we got to find him in this whole yeah. courtyard. And finding him out here is a challenge. <laughs> That's not him. There he is on the other side over there. Let's Bruno. go. <laughs> Holy cow, Bruno is big. That's a big sulcata. And he's got a pretty nice free range. Where's the water feature? Right behind you. It's just a little yeah, just drinking stream. Just a little soaking drinking stream. And they added this for Bruno. Oh, whoever's got this place got it made. Just the yeah, little yeah. sound of water. They didn't want a lot of sound out here. And then look at what we see. Right there is a red dragon. What kind of dragonfly is that? Build it and they will come. And Paul, 2017 Aquascape Conservationist of the Year. What is the number one food source for a dragonfly? Mosquitoes. Okay, so people say, what about a pond? Doesn't it attract mosquitoes? And it attracts wildlife that eat the mosquitoes. And so it's not stagnant water and you will actually hurt the local community instead of helping it when you put in a pond. A healthy pond full of hungry little fish and dragonflies is better than a bug zapper or even 10 bug zappers around your patio area for controlling vectors. And that is a direct quote from one of the lead entomologists at the University of Arizona. Amen. It isn't just Bruno. It's also the local quail, a lot of other local bird life, but Bruno here is one of the luckier tortoises in the world. This is courtyard and they love grass, so an endless supply of grass. Hi Bruno, how you doing there buddy? Very tame. Hi there kiddo. He gets an occasional scratch from the residents, so he's okay with that. What's interesting, though, about a big sulcata like this is they like to dig. It doesn't seem like he's got a lot of... He does. He digs up behind the shrubs. There's places around here that he has dug holes. They have maintenance people that come out and bury his holes after he's dug them. That is a large animal. 
and just give a little bit of a perspective. And he could feel that, believe it or not. That's a non-call built water feature. And this is more stuff that you typically see. And you can see the plumbing. So I always tell people, and the pump, and I always tell people, I manufacture everything that you don't see. Paul, gorgeous water feature. Thank you. Yeah, one of my favorites. <laughs> Are you guessing that I didn't have anything uh, to do uh, with this uh, one? Yes, I'm guessing. <laughs> I'm guessing. Yes. Oh, look at that. And there's all the butterflies. Dragonflies, butterflies, fish, blooming lilies, crystal clear water. And it's another pond gnome Paul Holderman ecosystem water feature. All of these people get to look at this, walk by it, check it out. So Paul, what number was this that you built? This was number two. This one happened within two years of the first one. Let me ask Steel Trap, is that true? <laughs> was this number two? Let me look at my calendar. <laughs> <laughs> Most of these units were empty and they were having a hard time renting them or selling them because of the busy road right here. And so they said, you know, instead of this ugly river rock retention basin, could you put one of your ponds here so that we could have better views from these windows? And mm -hmm. we built this pond and a year later, he told me that these were 100% sold. Just from a little pond. And this is your butterfly garden, huh? One of nope. them. Yeah. There are many of them. And here's the stream. That's the filter, guys. And that's the way a filter should look. You shouldn't see anything. You shouldn't see plastic. You shouldn't see rubber. You shouldn't see pipes. You just should see here water, sea water, and see clear water. If you don't have water like this, put a wetland filter on it. And that's what it will look like. Best filter you can possibly get for a water feature. And this is what koi do. They root around in the gravel. That's what they use their barbells for. And if you don't have gravel, they're not as happy. People that don't understand this, they put fish in liner ponds without rocks and gravel. But when it's rocks and gravel, they root around in it and pick up the rocks and eat the algae and eat the bacteria that lives on the gravel. And that's what an ecosystem pond should be like. now entering the fourth water feature we built on this property which made possible by the Winkleman family as another retention basin area this whole area was nothing but river cobble it looked like this area right here pretty much this is what everybody was looking down on was that that pattern filled the entire area so they wanted to make an area where there was potential for seeding which is this nice turf lawn area and they wanted me to kind of match up with the pine trees that surrounded the area talked about creating sort of a payson like atmosphere so rather than a koi pond i wanted to show them what could be done with a living stream and we made it a butterfly and birding area by using all native plants there's monkey flower woolly twin tip yerba manza all native plants which draws a lot of native and migratory bird life. This isn't a native, but it's always nice to see a little bit of iris on a job. And the, the flowers on woolly twin tip are just, it's hard to see them on video, but spectacular blue flowering native plant. And all of this faces that nice seating area. And this was actually phase one of a project that is going to be expanded here in a couple of years. They're actually wanting us to start another waterfall up here and run a wind a stream through this area coming down to the same cistern area at the bottom so we'll be expanding the cistern and building a stream that starts at the opposite end running down so the two streams will be running together at the center point absolutely a fantastic riparian area from what used to be a river rock desert
I love traveling. I love seeing how people are living the aquascape lifestyle. I'm clueless on why more people don't choose this over this, and it's because of awareness. And so that was my goal when I started my channel was to increase awareness. So if you guys like this stuff, please like, comment, and subscribe so more people can see what living the aquascape lifestyle, not this, that, is all about. I love it.